When the internet first became a thing, the youngsters and those who were hip to the scene so hip that they wouldn't use the term hip to the scene. There was a lot of prognostications out there saying that this was what was going to change and revolutionize the entertainment sphere that everybody was craving. And in so many ways that is true, but in others, there's cracks starting to form. Exhibit A, I'm going to have you listen to this audio clip from the Slash Filmcast, which I realize you're going to probably wonder, why are you doing this in a YouTube news video? By the way, welcome. My name is Kyle Marshall. The Slash Filmcast is this great podcast. By the way, if you are a film nerd, a really huge film lover, you need to listen to this podcast. They had on Laramie Legal, who is this film critic, author, podcaster. He had some stuff to say about free content on the internet. Let's have a listen. Ad dollars are shrinking on the internet, and it's not a sustainable business model. So it's not a question of, do I want to support this with my money? It's a question of, this won't be around if you don't support it with your money. And so, you know, I'm a proud sponsor for, you know, a subscriber, rather, of the, the Slash Filmcast and have been for the last, you know, 230 episodes or Thank something. Thank you for that, Laramie. And I'm happy Appreciate to do that. I mean, those $2 for the entertainment I get is minuscule and that's paying you guys you know 10 cents a show or something i mean it's it's ridiculous <laughs> to think that something that entertains you should be free you pay for your cable you watch tv you pay for your netflix to watch movies you pay for your video games to play games why wouldn't you pay or want to support something that you actively enjoy and brings you entertainment the reason is is because well it started free thus it should always be free so that got my head nodding and then soon after that hank green one half of the brilliant and often eccentric vlog brothers, also touched upon a similar topic in one of his videos. So here's just a very small smidgen of a clip. We'll call this Exhibit B. I want to change the business of content. I don't like it the way that it is that much. The business part. I like the content part very much, obviously. But I don't like that you can have a project like the Brain Scoop that has 50,000 really dedicated people in its community, but still, like, can't pay for itself. Like, can't be self-sustaining. Because I just don't think advertising is the right model. So, that's the backstory. Here are my thoughts. I realize that online content has been free and people love free. And there are going to be those who say that it's selling out to charge money or ask people to buy something for you. Like, forward them over into a website so they can get some swag. But it's your choice to do this and nobody's forcing you to do it, is what some people will say in that exact same accent. And yes, it's true. Nobody is hovering over me with a knife saying, you have to do videos about what's going on in YouTube land. Are you sure? All right, so maybe I'm the exception. The point is that yes, very few people are from outside pressures being forced to make any type of online content. However, there are inside pressures. Anybody who's had a creative spark, and I'm not talking just about videos or writing or any type of artistic expression, I'm saying any type of like elegant solution that you've come across. Maybe it's you found the quickest route to work or maybe you've discovered the best stain removal that you can you can do using household ingredients or like my dad has been able to make this device that can actually get turkeys out of the pot without them sticking to the bottom during Christmas and Thanksgiving. These are all great creative solutions and they fall into the term that Zay Frank likes to use which is brain crack. It's those little mind worms that wiggle around up in your cranium and you just can't stop thinking about them until you actually go and do it. For, for me as an example, there was so many mornings that I would wake up and be like, oh, I wish I was posting things up onto YouTube. And then you know what? I just did it. It was terrible, but then I got better at doing it. This stuff does take time though. Just again, using myself as an example, this video that you're watching right now started off as an idea. I did some research, I wrote, and then I rewrote, and then I rewrote again. I'm now currently filming what I wrote down. And after this, I'm going to be putting it onto my computer, importing it onto there, editing it, rendering it, then uploading it eventually. So I've already put in about four hours with another three hours probably coming up with all that other stuff. And that's on top of the 40 hours per week at my actual real job. That's pretty extensive for just a hobby. And this isn't even that complicated of a video. There's people who spend way more time doing what they put up onto YouTube. And if they can find a way to be compensated for their passion, Great. Money has never been the problem. Money is good. I'm going to get uh, I'm gonna get all bibly on you here for a second. People love to quote that money is the root of all evil, but they forget to look at the first bit of that line, which is the love of money is the root of all evil. And I agree with that. First Timothy, by the way. I had to look that up. So that's part of the issue, but it also dovetails nicely with the other part of the issue, which is that YouTube has changed. Change is not a bad thing. Change can be good. But instead of YouTube overtaking TV, it seems more like TV is overtaking YouTube. Hank talks about in his video how he really doesn't want it to be how 
99% of the people are watching 1% of the content, with that 1% being the same boring crap that you see on television already. The solution, in my mind, is rewarding those creative artists. The corporatization of the online realm, if that's what we want to call it, has begun, and it's a little bit troubling to me. As another example, let's take The Brain Scoop, this great online series about biology and science and taxidermy, and it constantly gets flagged for being inappropriate for people 18 or under. Which is fine if that's what the content is, and I don't think it is, but even if it was, that's fine. But the thing is with YouTube is that you can now not monetize any videos that are deemed inappropriate for people 18 and under. And that seems wrong to me. YouTube began very simply with a guy at a zoo and has grown far past what anybody could ever have imagined it could be. We have a great community who can do great things. Yes, there's going to be those people who go and type fag into every comment section that you see. But the people that are online are also the people that I see at VidCon every year who are so generous during Project for Awesome and Project Red Nose. YouTube has this engaged and passionate audience who is willing to find the next vlogger, the next musician, the next whatever that doesn't fit into any category. I have loved the story of John Cozart, or Paint, here on YouTube, who, whose video just went viral with the song about the Disney princesses. I love stumbling across those people who I haven't even seen before. I also love Zay Frank's musings. I love Tom Milsom slash Hexacordal's just bizarreness. I love Team Andrew's goofiness. I love that Crab Sticks is so just gosh damn funny. Traditional media was not there for them. Let's us be there for them. If that means that every so often I have to throw a couple of dollars for a CD or a t-shirt or a conference, I'm gonna do that. The thing that online video offers that no other medium can is that connection with the audience. You can speak directly to them. You can comment with them in the comment section. You can create a community. No other medium can do that. It's all a one-way street. It's Here's the media, you decide what to do with it. Hank ends his video by asking to create something different and I have none of the skills that he requires. So if you do, please go and watch his video. That link will be down in the description below, as are all the channels I talked about and the slash film cast. There's no top 10 this week, but I will be here next time, and I hope you are too. Have a great and awesome day.